So when we have unitary board composition, it simply means we have the overall chairman, then we have the executive and the non-executive combined together in one. But when we have two tiers or bilateral form of composition of the board, we'll be talking about the management board being separated from the supervisory board. For the unitary, we will only have the management board, but for the buy or two tier, we will be talking about the supervisory board, then we'll be talking about the management board. All these are their advantages and disadvantages. A unitary board in large company consists of the directors, executive directors, and non-executive directors. The non-executive directors are found on the board of most of stock market companies, that is listed companies. But they are also appointed to the board of subsidiary companies within a group and to the board of private companies. So, private organization too could form a board, like I said, when we are when we were looking at the role of the board. Private organizations are allowed. It's just that because of the complexity and monetary aspect of it, the financing aspect of it, they may not have the muscle to have a board of director, but they could compose it in their own way. Okay, so it is it is not compulsory that they should form it, but they can do so voluntarily. So let us talk about the executive. When you hear executive, it simply means that person is always on ground always on duty simply put that's what it means but when we say non-executive it means when you get to that place of work or assignment you might not meet that person because he or she doesn't run the activity on daily basis so it's non-executive but when we're talking of executive it's on daily basis so that is the difference between the two of them. Executive directors are directors who also have executive management responsibility in the company. They are normally full-time employee. They are normally full-time employee. So let us talk about the non-executive directors now. When we are talking about the non-executive directors, they do not have executive management responsibility. So therefore, or equally, they are not full employee. So they may not be on the payroll of the organization. Of course, they will have their own remuneration, but they are not an employee. Ned or non-executive directors are not employee of the organization. Therefore, they are not full-time staff. They are not even staff in the first place. When they are appointed, there should be a clear understanding about how much time an organization will need from non-executive directors. And when we are evaluating their performance and the like, this is one of the KPI key performance indicator apart from the contribution because one thing to be somewhere is another thing to actually contribute productively and constructively so apart from their time KPI their contribution to is of excellence independent directors just from that word independent that mean the the they are a bit afar off. They are not encumbered with so many things. 
or they are not too direct in the affairs of the organization. So basically, when we are talking about independence of an auditor or independent auditor precisely, we are talking about a director that does not have any association whatsoever, especially close association with the organization. In this sense, independence means they can have their own world view and opinion as it relates to a particular matter concerning the organization because they do not have so much of relationship that they can be thinking about or be like a constraint in their decision making. So they are more objective and the composition of the board must have independent director to balance things up. Non-executive too could be independent director, but they may, they may not. But independent director, they are not representing any stakeholder. They are just there to assist in objectivity, objective decision making, without biases, without any influence. In corporate governance, however, independent, we can say, means something much more than having a personal opinion or objective opinion. So it means they must be separated from the affairs of the organization. They do not have stakeholders group that they relate to. And they do not have any personal interest in contracts or any relationship, financial or otherwise, as it, as it relates to the organization. So, if we look at the independent director this way, then we can conclude that the non-executive could be independent and they may not because Non-executive can represent a particular stakeholder, but for independent director, they are not representing any stakeholder, whether shareholder, whether government.